a man on the verge of death utters, the twelve heavenly gods can't even defeat one of me, and all you can do is gather up to seal me very well. Go ahead and seal me. However, when I reawaken, your radiant light will die out in darkness. You wouldn't even be able to die a peaceful death amidst agony. He shouts. Then the voice from above tells him that they will look forward to that moment Diablo Volfer. However, for now, suffer in an eternal darkness. Thus the great Diablo Volfer, the strongest magician in the human realm, was sealed off by twelve gods, and after finding his way through the crack of a barrier that had opened after an eternity, he was able to escape from that place, and thus he gets reincarnated as a son of a duke. Nine years has passed after that, and he is now living as Jamie Welton, eldest son of the Seldam Kingdom's Count family. Ah, today will be another tiring day, he says. Then an old maid enters the room and says, Oh young master, what are you doing so early? He replied that he was looking at the morning sky, as it looked beautiful. Oh how affectionate you are. Now get dressed as master and madam are waiting for you in the dining room. Thus he goes to the dining hall with the maid where he meets his family. His mother scars Belle Welton, sole daughter of Belle family. His father Count Argino Welton, one of the only five sword masters in the country. And the girl feeding me is my kid sister Sarah Welton. After dinner he goes to his room and jumps on his bed. Seriously Hoy will never be able to get used to how over affectionate they can be he says. However it's just that I am terribly weak right now and those twelve gods still exist and they're leeching off their believers. Although this is the full extent to my power because dark magic doesn't exist in this era. The old maid enters the room and says, Young master, it is time for you to read books with madam. Jamie replies while acting cute, Yes, nanny, let's go. So he got dragged to the reading sessions held by his mother. After reading sessions, he tells his mother, I want to become a great magician like Heinz. His mother replies, You are very smart. I am sure you can become a great magician as you've already defeated three of your magic teachers and father said he's going to bring the greatest magician for you. He doesn't pay any attention to it and makes his way to the library. While walking in the hall, he sees an intruder with a white robe. As expected of Welton, he used an artifact like this in front of the entrance of the dining hall as a decoration, the old man says. Jamie wonders who he is. He has got a tremendous amount of mana, and it's leaking from him like a raging storm. He is at least an eighth-class magician. But how did he come here without a guide? Did he teleport here? Or is he an intruder? But he seems to be acting too laid back for a stranger in the swordmaster's house. The old man looks at Jamie and sees a great amount of mana surrounding him. Oh ho, I guess the son of a tiger is also a tiger. He is definitely above an average, teach old man says. Jamie gets angered because of the laid back attitude of the old man. If I was my past self, I would have kneeled him down first, but now I'm talking like this. I just don't like it I will show him how painful it is if you get hit when you've let your guard down by saying this he casts a spell on his hand. He fires a spell at the old man but it didn't work because it causes no damage at all. The old man got excited. It's amazing is this really the magic power of a nine year old boy. Nice try now it's my turn saying that he fires a spell at Jamie. Jamie tries to evade, but when he notices closely he realizes that the magic is not aimed towards him, so there's no reason for him to react. Seeing Jamie's reaction to his magic surprises the old man. Suddenly his father jumps between them and stops the spell with his sword. You're going too far. Jamie, are you okay? His father asks Jamie. He puts on an act on how scared he was and this angers his father, and he shouts to the old man. Let's have a quick chat, Mark Alinmel. The old man laughs on seeing this. At the meeting, Jamie's father asks the old man why he attacked his son, the Welton family's heir, and the old man calms him down. The old man asks him how much he knows about his son, and hearing this question confuses him. The old man's name was Marquis Linmel, and among the living, he is known to be the strongest eighth-class magician. Count Welton gets worried whether he will accept his son or not, and if he was wrong to consider his son to be a genius. The old man calms him down that whatever he is thinking is not correct. He says he can't accept his son as a student because he can't handle him and hearing this surprises Count Welton. Wait if an eighth class magician can't handle him then who can, he thought. 
Your son was able to read all my magic and that brat was sure that his magic won't be able to touch him and also your son is already a third-class magician from his self-teachings and if we exclude his body limits he's more than fourth class, a genius. No a monster is born, he needs no teacher just give him support. This might be the birth of the legendary ninth-class magician says the old man. Hearing these surprises and worries the count. A great storm will hit the magic world by saying this the old man disappears. I saw some actual magic this time and more than Marquis my father was amazing. I didn't know he was this much strong says Jamie. What's so funny about that someone asked him. Jamie turns around and sees the old man sitting on his bed. What were you thinking that made you not realize that someone was here says the old man. Jamie gets shocked and asks the old man why he is here. The old man laughs at him for getting terrified like that and says you really are a child for getting surprised like that. I knew he wasn't an ordinary man, but to think he could teleport this easily Jamie thought. The old man gives Jamie a magic book and tells him the magic you're using is too old and that's why I am giving you a book that's filled with magic I created myself and you're the first one who'll get to see it. I have high hopes for you. Saying this the old man disappears. Man breathing is breathing through the mouth and absorbing the mana through the heart and to do that, but there's a limit to it. You have to feel each mana particle and make it so that you can absorb it through the skin. But it's impossible to substitute it through old techniques he thought. Suddenly he jumps out on his bed and summon Black and tells him to break apart some mana. Black who made a contract with him breaks apart the mana in his surroundings. At the corner of the city we see two men discussing the recent incidents. Their names are Philip and Jance and they are members of the criminal organization. Can't you see he's sacrificing half of the organization for his own personal gain? Hayes is a territory where even Count Welton would allow organizations like us to thrive as long as we don't cross the line. But human trafficking is crossing, if not destroying that line, says Jance. Philip replies that if they are lucky they can get away with it, and Jance opposes it, and tells him did you know? That Count Welton happens to really love his children, but if that man were to hear that we were using children for human trafficking within his land, that day will be the day when the entire underworld of the city will be swept away. After hearing this Philip suggests they should run away as it's better to die trying rather than dying. At that moment Jamie comes there. They attack Jamie, but it doesn't do anything as Jamie evades it. He uses his manipulation magic on them and orders them to tell the truth. After hearing everything he realizes that the situation has already gotten serious. Human trafficking, huh? And of little children, on top of that. It's the crime my father despises the most Jamie thought. He orders them to reveal all the truth to his father and sends them away. When he was about to leave he saw the guys he sent thrown aside. He turns around and sees other members coming towards him. He uses his magic to delay their deaths. The guy with white hair orders his underlings to capture all of them. MC gets angry but he gets shot by the white haired guy. The guy fires a fire arrow at him but he gets surprised to see Ash around him. Brother what did you do ask his underling. What are you talking about? I'm sure I attack the little guy the white-haired guy tries to calm down. Suddenly Jamie appears above him and asks him, Is that all he has got? Who the hell is this guy? Why didn't he die? Then, those ashes are really. And what's that ominous aura that's covering his body? He gets terrified and fires off an explosion magic against Jamie. Although it's not comparable to the fifth class explosion magic explosion, this is enough to burn down that small body of his without a trace, he thinks. But that doesn't work, and he gets attacked by the magic of Jamie which is a lot stronger than his and gets defeated. Seeing their leader gets defeated scares others, and they try to run away, but they get burned by MC. After getting all the information, Jamie gets confused about what to do with the body. Even though I held back, his soul was completely ruined. And even if his body is fine, he'll die soon. Since he's a third-class magician, I would have normally turned him into an undead, but the physical appearance of an undead will only be poisonous to a peaceful place such as this Jamie thought. So he uses mana extraction on it. Now he turns to the guys he raised from death. Although I forcefully feed them with mana, but they won't stay like this forever. He summons his summon black and uses necromancy on them. 
Although it's similar to bringing them back to life, it's not entirely the same, and that's because bodies raised from the dead using necromancy are no longer living beings. Abandon your lives and arise, he shouts, and the spell works. They arise from death and kneel before him and pay him respect. Jamie names them as Azard and Raisin. Who is this person? He only looks to be around nine or ten years old, and yet, why can I sense an enormous and frightening aura from him? He's exactly like the beings that I've only read in books when I was little, an evil being that shouldn't exist, Azard thought. Seeing their frightened faces makes Jamie realize that he should tell them the truth. He tells them that they didn't need to fear him for misunderstanding to be a demon lord. I am a dark magician who once tried to kill the twelve gods.